Welcome back to Real Estate 101. Today we're going to continue our discussion on mortgage financing and talk a little bit about first-time home buyers. And I'm pleased to be joined once again by Tracy Brock of Dominion Lending Centers. Tracy, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Joe. All right, Tracy. So what is the minimum down payment required for first-time home buyers? That's a good question. I think there's a lot of good questions that the home buyers have to consider before they get into considering their mortgage options. So with a first-time home buyer, with any home buyer, the minimum down payment below $500,000 purchase price is 5%. And okay. I would say that the majority of first-time home buyers aren't purchasing over $500,000. If it goes over $500,000, anything additional to that is another 7%. But other than that, it's pretty much 5% standard down payment. If you're a business for self person, then it's going to be 10%. Right. So on the first 500, it's 5%. And let's say it's there's another 100 for 600, then it's 7% of that 100. Of 100, that 100,000, correct. So yeah. another 7,000. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, and what about expenses? How does that play into all this? Well, there, it's not just your down payment that you need. You have to keep in mind that there's closing costs that are involved with purchasing a home, right. land transfer taxes, the lawyer fees, title insurance, home insurance, appraisals. You know, appraisals sometimes. Yeah, there's lots of costs. So I like to tell my home, my first time home buyers to budget between one and a half to 2% of the purchase price. And that allows them a good buffer. They're not going to use all of that. But if they have that available, they're not going to be short $500 on the day of closing. Right. Okay. So in a previous episode, we talked about credit scores. Mm -hmm. um, and I know they affect it, but how do they I guess, how do they point you in which direction for for, for finan financial product for, for the client, depending on their credit? Well, they have to, obviously, you have to have some credit. You know, some people think having no credit is great. No credit is just as bad as uh, bad credit. Right. So you need to have, um, you know, you need to be paying your bills. A lot of first-time home buyers are younger, so, you know, they maybe not have received the, the proper training to use their credit cards. They may find that um, they only have one credit source. So it might be that your credit score is really high. Maybe you're scoring 700, 720, but with only one credit card, the lender's going to want to see some other source of um, credit repayment history, whether it be a cell phone bill, your car insurance, rental payments, whatever that may really, be. Really, even if you have a 720 score. That's right, because they want to see two tr active trade lines for a minimum of 24 months with no missed payments. And ideally, they want it to, one to be revolving and one to be alone. Okay, so what is a typical time period for for first time home buyers to live in a home? In your experience, to be honest with you, most people only stay in their home three to four years. First time home buyers, everybody, really, everybody. There's about ten percent of the population that you know. I'm one of those ten percent that this is not going to be my starter home, and you know, sixteen years later, I'm still at the same house. Right. But most people do something with their mortgage every three to four years. So, um, you know, they like to think that they're going to stay in for five years, but really when they're, think about it, a lot of them are just getting married or they're just moving in together for the first time. So, you know, next thing you know, there's children coming, they want a bigger home, they increase their salaries a little bit. So it's all about wants and needs. And then when you're a little bit older, and maybe you're, because there's a lot of older people that are first time home buyers too, um, you know, they get excited about their new home, they buy all this stuff, they have all this credit, now they want to consolidate and the house is three or four years older, so the house is a, evaluated a little bit higher and they can sometimes consolidate debt too. So there's other right. reasons as well. Right. And just to touch on that, some of the people, you know, that are my clients that I've dealt with, first time home buyers, they bought thinking they're going to stay for 10 years, but with the market crazy the way it is right now, they don't want to pass up the opportunity to cash in. I know. And it's true. That's very well, true as well, especially if they're moving out of the GTA. Right. You know. Okay. So if you don't have, for first time home buyers who ha haven't been able to save the required down payment. Mm -hmm. Are there other sources that you can get it from? Sure. Uh, you can get your money gifted from an immediate family member, your father, your mother, your grandparents, brother, sister. You can uh, do what they call flex down program. So some people have access to lines of credit that have ten, twenty thousand $20,000 limits. As long as your payment on that $20,000 limit fits within your budget, and it fits within your ratios. You can use that line of credit for your the TDS down payment. And but, GTA, yeah, right. Or you can, or you can use a portion of that for the for the down payment. There is no more zero down, but uh, you definitely can get sor other sources of. Uh, so there's income. no zero down at all, not even through credit union. Yeah, no. Nobody's no, doing it. Right? No. 
the last one has stopped doing that. So Okay, and I also heard, I haven't dealt with this personally, but I also heard there's a, a region appeal program for first-time home buyers or something? There is, that's correct. And, and and other regions have similar programs. I'm particularly familiar with the region appeal one only because that's where I'm from. But um, basically what they'll do is they have a maximum purchase price amount that they're willing to allow you to buy. It's uh, a loan, but it's an interest-free loan as long as you stay in that home for 20 years. Whoa. But you have to keep in mind, like especially with the house market right now, if you can get your 5% down payment basically for free, and then you, you know, you're there for five years, you've made X amount of dollars. Let's say you bought your home for $350,000 and now your, your home's worth $450,000. You've paid down your mortgage a little bit. So now your mortgage balance is about three twenty-five. dollars So you're working with $125,000 of equity. Right. They gave you originally seventeen thousand five hundred, so you owe them the appreciation on the seventeen thousand five hundred. So you give back the city twenty thousand dollars, and you've got after costs and real estate and all that seventy five to eighty thousand dollars to invest in a new home that you didn't have five years earlier. Right. So you can still get out, and you don't have to stay twenty years. No. You just have to pay them. You just have to pay them back with accumulated interest on that original amount they gave you. Interesting. Yeah, that's good. All right. So what's the difference for, for first-time home buyers who are considering their financing options on um, variable rate and fixed rate mortgages? I always recommend to first-time home buyers to do the fixed. Um, fixed cost. The fixed, yes, because it's in a fixed payment for five years. You know exactly what your mortgage payments are going to be. You're not worried about whether the rates are increasing, decreasing. However, you know, they, they go within the five-year period. But some people, you know, Maybe they there's a lot of young professionals out there that make a good income that aren't wanting to be extravagant in their first home purchase, and so their ratios are really low. So it just really depends on risk factors. So if you're um, earning a really good income and you decide that you just want to live in a condo in Toronto and spend, you know, your mortgage is only three hundred thousand dollars a year, you may want to consider a variable rate. Historically, variable rates are definitely interest more interest savings than in a fixed term. Over the long term. Over the long term, absolutely. Right. And then the other point to keep in mind is I always say to my clients that if you're going to do the variable rate, you really need to stick it out. You just need to stick it out for the term. If you go five years and you hate it and you don't want to do anything more with it and you never want to be associated with that again because of the fluctuation, fine. But when you start seeing the rates go up, you're going to be in a position where you want to lock in. All right. And whatever rate you're locking you at, so let's say you're two and a half years in, the lender is going to lock you into a three-year rate or greater. And I assure you that that three-year rate is always going to be higher than what your current variable rate is. So it's still cheaper to stay in yeah, the, if, you, so if you've got the stomach for it. Yeah, but you just have to be. So I always tell first-time home buyers it's probably better to do a fixed rate just because it gives you that first five years. There's expenses you don't anticipate when you have a home. All right. You know, so it just gives you that five years of consistency. All right. So let's talk about insurance. <laughs> a lot of people I deal with when I'm working with buyers, um, they... I think they, they confuse default insurance and title insurance. Mm -hmm. Can you explain a little bit about the difference of those yeah. two? Yeah. So when you're a, a home buyer, whether you're a first time home buyer or a seasoned home buyer, if you put down less than 20% on your purchase, the lenders insure the mortgages through three of the default insurers, CMHC, Genworth, and Canada Guarantees. Right. That fee is calculated based on how much of a down payment you have and what amount of mortgage you require. And then it's added to the mortgage. And it's the insurance, even though you are assuming those costs, it's the insurance for the lender to know that if you should default or not make your mortgage payments and they have to take legal action to take back your home, their mortgage has been covered, their costs are going to be covered, right. or any loss from selling that home is going to be covered by the default insurers. Title insurance is to protect you and the lender because the lender at the beginning has majority of the ownership in the home, right? Well, they've got a lien on yeah. it. Yeah, so it's to protect uh, title fraud. And there is a lot of title fraud in Canada. So, you know, people take your ID, they photocopy it, they put a mortgage behind there, they use a different mailing address, and when you try to sell your home, you can't sell it because there's this property on there, or this mortgage Whoa. on there, right? right? So title insurance protects. So when you first take the title insurance out, it's taken out in the name of the lender. I always tell people once they start getting considerable equity in their home, that they should consider taking the title insurance out in their own name too. With title insurance, as long as you live in that home, then you never have to get title insurance again in your own names. Every time you switch your mortgage, the lender then again asks you to take out new title insurance. 
But if you always just stayed with that same lender, never needed an increase, never, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Never made any changes to your mortgage. You just went through the process, renewed it when it came up for renewal and everything. Then title insurance is a one-time charge. Okay. Now for the default insurance, when they add it to the mortgage, mm -hmm. do they roll that in over the full maturity date, the 25 years, or is that done on the first five years of... No, it's amortized over the life of the mortgage. So, so if the mortgage amortization is 25 years, it's over 25 it's years. Up, right. If the person has the wherewithal to do a 20-year amortization, then it would be amortized over 20 years. Right. Okay. So, um, and, and I guess to touch on another insurance product that, <laughs> that you need when you buy before they can even close is the home insurance. Both of those do not eliminate the need for home insurance. That's correct. That's correct. Home insurance is still required. If you... Um, even if you're living in a condo, I always recommend that people get content insurance. Right. You know, it just protects you from fire, smoke, all that other stuff that happens in a home. All right. So a lot of people, when they're looking for a mortgage product, the first thing they always ask me is, is about the rates. Mm -hmm. But why is it, I mean, because you're in this every day and we've talked about this before, why is it just as important as the product that you're getting into as the rate? Rate is, is really subjective to what type of product you're getting yourself into. If you're looking for best rate, best rate sometimes comes with high um, back end stuff that you don't know about fees. it. That fees, like, you know, say you're you in three years, like I said, most people only go three to four years and then they're doing something new with their mortgage. If you take a five year rate and you get this great rate because the lender is offering 2.1 or 2.2 for five years, Typically, those rates mean to break that mortgage, the penalty is usually 2.75% of the outstanding balance. It's what? not an interest rate differential. It is not an interest only payment, three months interest. It's in 2.75% of the original balance. And it usually comes with a bona fide sale. So there's many, you need to know, it's not just about the rate. It's about what you're going to be doing in the next five years. You need to ask yourself, what am I going to doing, be doing in the next five years? Am I planning to have children? Are we thinking that we're going to have a, ja a transfer of jobs. Um, am I going back to school? You know, all those things are very relevant. And if you're not taking into consideration the products that are available to you, and as well as what the rate is, then you might find that there's no interest savings at all by getting that 0 0.10 difference in the long run. Right. All right. So what about monthly budget? Because that's a big thing. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got to have your budget in order. Um, how, how do you, when you sit down with somebody, like what are you looking at when you're doing it? One of my first questions to every purchaser is what do they feel that they can afford for just their monthly mortgage payments and tax payments? And if they're considering condos and the condo fees, Right. because I find that right now, uh, buyer's expectations, because the market is so high in price right now, the buyer's expectations are, oh, I can't get a house for that little, right? So they're looking at these, you know, six and $700,000 homes when they're telling me that their monthly budget is $2,100. So I have to keep in, I have to put that in perspective. And I, I find that when they really can't afford those $700,000, if you break it down to what do you think, if I told you this is what your mortgage payments are, this is what you have to pay for taxes each month, this is what your monthly budget is, it kind of brings them back to the reality, okay, well, maybe this is just my starter home and not right. my forever home. A lot of first-time home buyers have this perception that they need everything in the first shot. You know, there's still a lot that are very realistic, but a lot of them are, you know, but I want the brand new house and I want the granite countertops and, and I want the heart and I want the ensuite bathroom. But typically, their maximum purchase prices are around 500000 So, and they're telling me, well, right now I pay twelve hundred dollars in rent, so I could probably go up to eighteen hundred. I'm like, well, then you better drop your purchase price down because that's right. not your budget. And I think that when you give them that 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 scenario, it kind of brings them back to a little bit of a reality check because nobody wants to be house poor. It's a very miserable life sitting at your home and doing nothing. Nothing, yeah. And you want to want to touch on that? I always say that, especially here in Canada, people buy based on what they can afford per month. Mm -hmm. It's not so much what the cost of the house is. Don't buy a $2 million home if it fits within their monthly budget. That's correct. Right? So uh, I, I think sometimes people overstretch themselves because of that, because they don't factor in all the other expenses that are going to come after you get into the home that you just don't foresee, right? Well, what I bring it back to them when it, with that is that I always say to them, okay, so you're saying you don't care what you just told me about your monthly, but monthly budget. You still want that home. How often do you go out for dinner? And they'll say, oh, once or twice a week, I go, well, you can't do that anymore. Right. How often do you switch your cars? 
hmm, every three or four years, we won't be able to do that anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? And how often do you golf? Or how often do you golf? When do you? How often did you take a vacation? You probably won't take a vacation now for four years because all you're going to be doing is pumping money into your house. All right. So. All right. So what about how do people decipher, um, if any, what their goals are for the home, or is it just uh, um, you know something they're getting into to turn into some equity for 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 their three to five year flip? Yeah, well, I think that you have to, those are those are the questions you need to ask yourself. You need to consider, what is my monthly budget? What are my expectations for the home that I'm trying to get? How much do I have saved? You know, and, the, and all these questions should be asked in the meeting with your mortgage broker or your mortgage professional. Because if they're a good mortgage broker, they're going to make sure that they prompt you these questions because you can't always think of everything. Right. You know, there's not always like, that's our job to remind you of the things that are going to come up in life that may hinder your what you want to do as far as your purchase price. All right, Tracy. So for first time home buyers who are watching uh, or listening and they may need your help, how can they get in contact? They can contact me directly at 416-788-6207. They can visit my website at tracybrock.ca or they can go to Facebook and look for Tracy Brock is my mortgage broker. All right, Tracy, great stuff. Thanks for coming on today's show. You're welcome. Thank you. So there you have it. If you're looking for a top mortgage broker, get in contact with Tracy Brock of Dominion Lending Centers. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like, comment, and share our videos. I'm Joe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.